Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Mini, a true nerd, and welcome to the Commission Organized Crime Grand Strategy. Now, this one interests me because I like grand strategy games, and this is the sort of one that I've never really thought about before. But yes, as you probably guessed from the title, it's a grand strategy game about organized crime. Ooh, now that just piques my interest. So the way this basically goes is there's going to be a city and there's going to be five families that want to rule it. At the start we can all just like, you know, expand, take some empty territory. Uh, that piece isn't necessarily going to last. So we need to pick one of the families. I personally prefer these guys because it looks like you're playing as Francis York Morgan. And speaking of that city, here's that city. It's divided up into five neighbourhoods, uh, each of which has a pile of little sub-districts that appear when you actually zoom in. It's all a turn-based game, everything happens on turns, where basically you and your four AI opponents all take turns simultaneously, and then the effects are all calculated at the same time. So the way this game operates is basically you've got yourselves a bit of a nice family tree here. So we're ruled by Benny. Effectively, I'm playing as Benny. He rules this whole place, and as a result, any traits that he's got are passed on to the entire crime empire. So he's pretty important, and the game is kind of about levelling him up. As we actually start, you know, setting up some rackets, making some money, he'll get more and more powerful, that means he can have more underlings, and thus we can expand further. Right now, because he's only level 1, he's only allowed two people underneath him, and those two people are each allowed two people under them. So the tier under him is the Capo Regime, though I'm probably going to forget that and just call them Captains. If I say Captains, these are the guys I mean. The guy under the Don, anyway. So I've got these two guys right here, Arthur and Benjamin. They appear to be twin brothers. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, or if they're just recycling the asset, because those two guys are... They're not quite twin brothers, but they look quite similar. Actually, they look quite similar to this guy, just from a, a different angle. Well, it does say family, so maybe they are actually literally family. And yeah, if so, there's quite the resemblance. These two capos are both going to be dispatched into one of these five neighbourhoods. So, five neighbourhoods and only two capos. So, I can only start off by actually occupying two of the five neighbourhoods. The capos also have perks, so they're passing those perks on only to the neighbourhood that they're actually in. Once we actually go into a neighbourhood, there's a whole bunch of buildings or like little areas that exist within a neighbourhood, obviously. Then there's these two guys, the soldatos. I'm probably just going to call them grunts. If I say grunt, I mean these guys over here. Everything's fine. So they basically go down to a very local level and actually set things up, like, you know, insurance rackets or fraud or whatever. They're the guys actually on the ground making things happen. So at the beginning of the game, I can literally only occupy four of these places anywhere on the board. So right now, there's plenty of space for me and the other four families to actually just, you know, live side by side and not get in each other's way. But as you level up and you get more captains and more grunts under each captain, yeah, New Shore City is going to start getting crowded. And obviously, these guys also have uh, their own little benefits as well, which kind of might influence where you want to put them and what you actually want to set up with them. Anyway, let's just kick this off. I think you'll see what we mean pretty quickly. It's actually all kind of fits together pretty nicely. You see, it's time to actually deploy my capos at this point, but my Don has a perk. Showman. Profit from entertainment rackets increases by 20%, heat increases by 1. So I can make a lot of money very quickly through setting up the more entertaining types of crime. Things like, I don't know, gambling dens, speakeasies, whatever. But it's also going to draw police attention because I'm a bit of a showman. Still, that early money will probably be useful. So that probably means I want, you know, to avoid the, the more kind of poor areas like over here on this side of the city. Instead, Drea Square here and East Cushman, or if you just kind of look over, it tells you like uh, how big and how rich areas are. Yeah, there's plenty of kind of rich and average income areas around here. Probably a decent starting point. So I'm going to send both my capos over to this side of the map. So, into Trey Square, we simply say assignments and then decide who's going. I think Arthur, who is indeed steadfast, so he's less likely to become less law to me, he goes over to Drea, and as for Cushman, we'll actually send over his brother, Benjamin. So, Benjamin, you go over in that direction, and you are frugal. So, as a result of that, yes indeed, profits from financial rackets. So, we've got a couple of good traits going on there. Finance and entertainment can make me a lot of money very quickly. So those guys are now going to be deployed straight away in that direction, and that's all I can do for this turn. So just click next turn, and all of the gangs will immediately start deploying their capos. 
So, now we see whether we've been lucky or not. Because we see how many people have gone into each of these districts. So right now, Dre Square is divided between me and one person from the Junio family. So yeah, there's actually five families floating around. And each of them has two cabras available because everyone starts on a level playing field. You can if you want to increase the difficulty so they actually start off with an advantage over you. I'm just playing a fair game where everyone starts off equally. So... Probability wise, there ought to be, yeah, approximately two capos in each of these neighborhoods. So, two, two, someone's got lucky up there, and there's only one over there, two there, and Fordham is a bit more crowded. You don't really want crowding, you want to avoid crowding. So, I've been about average luck, and yeah. The family of the Denanos, they've actually done well. Right now, they've got that area to themselves. So let's start off with East Cushman, where Benjamin is, and he's got Frugal. So financial rackets are gonna make more money here. Now I need to actually pick a neighbourhood that he's gonna start deploying his two soldados into. So he can basically deploy two guys and actually keep two rackets going anywhere. So there's plenty of buildings here, and again, hopefully, if we're lucky, me and the other guy who are here, we're just gonna stay out of each other's way. But we can't know, because we might both just pick to go into the same little neighbourhood. So the capo's in place, now we actually put the grunts on the ground. So, that's another turn that needs to be spent doing that. So for example over here, Birch Hill is a large district with an average income. So that might be a nice place for a little bit of, yeah, financial work going on. A nice financial racket, something like insurance fraud that makes a lot of money up front, but it will dwindle over time. But, in order to just like, you know, get some money in nice and quick, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So in order to do that, we need to actually pick one of the two soldados to actually go down here and do that. So I'm going to go for this guy. He technically would make a bit more money doing entertainment, but let's just let him get on with some financial stuff for the time being. Next up, we have to choose how much actual muscle we want to send with him. Each of my capos comes with 20 guys at the moment, though that will go up over time. And they've only got two guys to divide it between, so I may as well send them with 10 muscle each, just for safety, because there's nothing else muscle actually does. Meanwhile, down here, yeah, we've got a medium-sized poor district. Now, that might be a lovely place for, yes, here we go. We got ourselves a guy here who's actually got additional profits from alcohol rackets. So, nice poor district. How about we just slap down a nice speakeasy over there, send the other guys with him. Marvellous. So we can do all of that next turn. Now we just need to turn our attention to Drea, where, of course, we've also got a guy, so we need to actually deploy the two other foot soldiers there. What are your perks? So you've got yourself one soldado uptight entertainment rackets, and the other guy... Risk taker. Gambling. Okay, that works for me. So we really want to have one gambling den and one form of entertainment in some form or another. But bear in mind, I only start off with 50,000. So I can't go for like the really big expensive things. Like casinos are, yeah, casinos cost $120,000 to set up. So I couldn't even afford one of them. I couldn't afford flipping half of a casino right now. And I've got to set up four things ideally next turn. So I need to go for the cheaper things, to be honest. So for example, yeah, a little gambling den for about 12,000. That'd be absolutely marvelous. Speakeasy at the bottom is expensive, but boost recruitment, so I'd actually get more muscle joining. That might be nice, but I'll see if I can afford it. i tell you what, this large area down here, that's probably a decent spot for me to set up some form of a distillery or speakeasy. So yeah, here we go. You'll do there. Lovely, and you can have 10 men as well. And another large average district, fine. We'll just start a gambling den there. We'll see how it goes. So there we are. Profits from gambling up by 20%. Heat will go up too. Screw it, that'll be fine. Take the rest of the soldiers with you. Lovely. Now we just move time on and we see what's happened overnight. Because, yeah, worst case scenario, everyone's decided to go into the same few areas. So I've moved down here. 11 soldiers, which is, yeah, my 10 muscle together with me, myself, and... Alright, we do have some small amount of competition. Someone else has moved into Birch Hills with me. Now, right now, me and him are just, you know, quietly being at peace with each other. 
And for the time being, if I were to, I could turn that to war anytime I want to. I don't want to, even though I outnumber him, because there's no reason for us to fight right now. No reason to cause trouble with another family. There's plenty of space to go around. Now, let's see how I can actually spend some of my little starting money here. Ah, yes, of course. So over here, we've got ourselves a showman, who will therefore be able to make good money from entertainment. This seems like a good starting point. Numbers, the Italian lottery. Let people bet with the odds in your favour. Presumably that does count as entertainment. It doesn't actually say. I kind of wish it did actually say, because sometimes you just have to kind of figure out whether something's an entertainment or not. I mean, that feels like entertainment to me. Though then again, a gambling den has got to be entertainment, and uh, that's a bit cheaper. Though, hmm, it makes a lot less money. It makes a lot less money. 2,500 versus 5,000, but it boosts recruitment. Yeah, screw it. We'll get bonus money in because that's definitely entertainment and boosting recruitment's good. Plus, it's a bit cheaper. I do need to keep my money under control. Ah, yes, this guy down here in the lot still flats. He is a teetotaler. Increased profit from alcohol. Marvellous. Well, that one is nice and easy to take care of. Let's just figure out what's the cheapest way for him to make alcohol. Either distillery, 28,000 up front. That's very expensive. 5,000 base profits. Okay. That's a lot of profit, mind, but that's a lot of money to spend up front. Or, go for the speakeasy. Again, boost recruitment, but makes a lot less money. A lot less money. Bonus recruitment wouldn't be a bad idea. Honestly, the amount of difference, yeah. Let's go for a distillery down there. Go for a distillery. It's a lot of money I've just spent. That means I can probably only afford to do one actual uh, racket over here in Drea. And meanwhile, good. I've got both of these areas to myself for the time being. No one else is actually moving into them. Actually, no. There is one other guy here. Someone from the Juilanos. Okay. Right now, we massively outnumber them because they haven't sent any muscle. That's just their guy. No muscle at all. So, uh, let's not worry too much about him for the time being. Instead, uh, let's get something down I have been mean to do. Because, yeah, right now I've got a lot of recruitment coming in. Not much money. So, that's no good at all. So how about we spend, ah, oh, I can't quite afford insurance fraud. It's a ton of bit too expensive. That's a shame. Right, what's cheap enough I can actually afford it? I tell you what, protection. That's nice and easy. That pays for itself in four turns. Let's just get on with that for the time being. Right, money has been spent. Right now, yeah, over here, I don't have a racket set up at all. Move things on. But now i do have money i actually have money again marvelous and because i'm slowly gaining money in territory if we actually go back over to benny himself he should slowly be actually gaining yeah he's slowly starting to gain a little bit of progress towards being level two and a few more people going on marvelous let's just pass a turn or two see what goes on here ah but something very important is happening remember how i invested in yeah additional recruitment over in East Cushman with Benjamin. So Benjamin now has 21 men available to him, not 20. Because, yeah, there's actually four levels. There's the Don, the Capo Regime, the Soldado, and then the actual Muscle at the very bottom who don't even have names. But because I actually invest in increased recruitment, you can see more and more men are available to me in East Cushman. So if there turns out to be a war in East Cushman, I've now got an additional man to help fight it. Now, here's interesting. So up in Birch Hills over in Cushman... What's going on right now is I've got this district more occupied. Right now, I've got more muscle present than the other family has. However, they've spent more money than me right now. And each area has a maximum amount that can be spent there full stop, at which point it becomes fully developed. And a total number of people who are allowed to live there. So what I could probably do is just, yeah, quietly cause these guys some problems because they've actually spent like... $37,000 on this place. So they spent like their entire starting treasury just here on something very expensive indeed, but they don't have the muscle to protect it. So I think we're just going to quietly push them out and that will be absolutely fine. And the same situation is true over in Shore Bay. Someone else has spent more money than me on something. Let's just quickly kick them out. They didn't bother sending the muscle to back it up. Now, I probably shouldn't be picking a fight with, like, you know, two gangs simultaneously, but screw it, I'm sure it's fine. So, move time on, and we should make... There we go, good bit of money. Now we've got 15 grand under our belt, we can probably build something good uh, over here at Rodham Hill. Because Rodham Hill, I've actually got to myself, together with just a couple of guys just sitting here, not doing much. 
and gambling rackets are going to make extra money thanks to this guy. Absolutely marvellous, so let's get on with a little bit of that. And a gambling den costs 12,000? Spot on. Absolutely spot on. That'll also boost local recruitment. Get that under there. Meanwhile, back in Birch Hills, yes indeed, we attacked the Kalesi family over there. The Kalesi family's last remaining soldado has died at the hands of our family. Now, that might cause some trouble, admittedly, but it was also worth doing because I've made them waste a lot of money. When there's no soldados left in an area, then any business just basically packs in. You don't get a refund for it. So those guys have lost a lot of money up front. They're now a long way behind me, which is great. And in addition, heat's going up more slowly because if a district becomes too crowded, then all of the different rackets are all generating heat. So this district's already up to 13 heat. So it was going up fast. Now it's only going up by plus two, which is a lot better. And indeed, the same thing happened down in Shore Bay. Marvellous. So heat should now be going up slower. These guys have lost a whole bunch of investments. We should be in good shape. And with that new investment as well, oh yeah, money's starting to come in faster. Money's starting to come in a lot flipping faster. Like in this, how are you doing, Benny? Yeah, Benny is starting to actually gain XP faster as well. Beautiful. Now the thing is, when you actually look at an area, you don't always know what's going to happen there. Like when it shows you the rackets, it gives you an idea of roughly what the base profit is, but that's going to vary area to area. So Birch Hills over here, where we set up the gambling den, what we discovered after we set that up is actually rackets under the gambling category generate extra profit here. So this place is making very, very good money indeed. And as a result of that, yeah, I might just save up for a turn and set up numbers uh, the Italian lottery right here. So uh, yet more betting going on in Birch Hills could be an excellent source of money. However, over in Lot Still Flats, where we actually set up a distillery, appropriately enough, unfortunately, that technically counts as uh, smuggling apparently. Rackets under the smuggling category generate minimal profits here. So that turns out to have not been a great thing to do. So what I probably ought to do is actually sell that immediately because a base distillery ought to be generating, hang on let me just double check this here, a base distillery ought to be generating about $5,000 because they're very very expensive to set up. My distillery is well it's still making 3,700 profits. The question is, should I just sell it and actually move over to something more appropriate? Because this is technically smuggling and not alcohol. So if I just sell my distillery immediately, I will make 14,000 back. So that's about, I think about 50 odd percent of what I paid for it. Go on then. I'll do that, but it looks like I don't get it immediately. I'm going to need to actually wait until next turn for that to come through. Still, that'll be a nice boost of money and then we can set up something more appropriate for this area. So I'm guessing the reason why smuggling doesn't work here is because this place is just down in the corner. If we just look at all the connections, well, where would I smuggle to exactly? Potentially smuggling somewhere more like around here might be more appropriate. So move time forward, and yes, that is a big old pile of money I've just picked up. So Lot Still now needs something new, in particular, speakeasies. Let's see if that's going to work a bit better there. Still not great to be honest, but it'll do, alright? It's worth it just to have some extra people floating around in this district. That gambling den, however, yeah, that's doing some good stuff right there. Let's just keep time ticking on. And now I've got the money to actually set up something new over here in Birch Hills. Let's set up the numbers. Marvellous. So that should get even more money coming in. Keep time ticking on, and oh yeah, now, now we're starting to make excellent money every single week. And as that money starts coming in, my Don starts moving towards levelling up faster and faster. So probably at this point we can just afford to pass a few turns, uh, invest a little bit more back into all these areas I'm in, figure out what's going to work where. But also keep an eye on heat, because sooner or later, heat's going to start being a little bit of a problem. So right now, Rodham Hill's okay, plus three, ah. 30 plus 3. That speakeasy is plus 5. Okay, speakeasies are drawing a bit of attention to themselves. There are things we can do about that, however. There are plenty of things we can do. For example, if we're willing to spend the money, we can money launder. So as a result of that, it makes a small amount of profit, but it reduces heat. That, that could be very, very useful indeed. And yeah, plenty of these things have trade-offs to them. 
So yeah, gambling dens are very, very, very powerful indeed in terms of making money, but yeah, they are incredibly expensive to actually set up. Extortion is a cheap way of making money fast, but generates lots of heat, etc, etc, etc. I mean, look at that. Hijacking is hugely valuable. 8,000 base profit a turn, but it's going to generate a big pile of heat. Now, I am starting to think a little bit, however. Maybe that's not a bad idea. So this speakeasy just doesn't seem to be doing the job for me at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of that investment, get the money back... We're going to get some hijacking going on here, and then when the heat gets too bad, we simply abandon the neighbourhood, and we move straight on. So that should pay for itself. Right, up to 29,000 next turn already. Now this place I'd actually like to hold on to, because this place is great, it's generating quite a large amount of money for me. I mean, look at that, Birch Hills is generating about 5 grand every single week. So I'd like it to stay nice and calm. And the easiest way to take care of that will be investing in money laundering. Let's get heat going down, please, and ideally keep Birch Hills stable indefinitely. Now, where's anyone else investing? And there's the pit up there. Yeah, here's the thing. So the Blues are struggling to invest at all because I basically screwed over their initial supply of money by chasing them out of the district they're in. So the Blues are in a lot of trouble. What else is going on here? The Yellows around here. They're investing. I think we kicked them out of one place already. So they're not doing so bad. Shore Bay, remind me, what have you got down over in Shore Bay? Ah, just a basic protection racket down there. So... Probably, at some point, we might want to actually move on from that. Because protection is not exactly generating much for me, to be honest. That's making very, very low profits indeed. The better thing might be to head over to the theatre district with all these guys and basically just chase out the yellows from there. That is a rich medium district. I've probably got the cash flow to start putting some fancy stuff down. Yeah, go on then. Let's actually... Sell this place, please. It's only going to be 4,000. That's absolutely fine. And instead, remind me, which one were you over here? You're respected, so you can bring additional people. And your loyalty's going up because you're pretty happy. Yeah, I think, uh, Charlie Tails, uh, you can come over here to the theatre district, actually. And bring all the muscle you can actually get your hands on. Beautiful. So he's going to move over there. We're going to kick those guys out. And we're going to spend some money making a rich district mine. Because rich things, yeah, they cost more up front. But they can be worth an awful lot of money here. An awful lot. And Benny is... Oh, Benny is starting to actually gain some experience very quickly now. So, obviously, because we massively actually outnumber them, we are going to go straight into a war footing with them. This place is rich. Let's see what we want to set up for a nice rich place. Ooh, a gentleman's club. That makes big money. Yeah, that's kind of halfway up to, if you like, a, a casino. It's only 50 grand only. Only 50 grand, but 10,000 base profit. You just get that sourced out, you are in good shape. Yeah, screw it. I'm actually going to save up for that. Let's just save a few turns, get a gentleman's club going on in the rich district. Because once we get that set up, that is a lot of money very quickly. Now, what's going on to the heat? Ah, good. The heat in Birch Hills is now actually going down, which is spot on. So, Birch Hills is really my cash cow for the minute. And it's already actually losing heat. So, it should stay mine and stay safe. This place, however, we need to watch out for. It's already up to 46 heat, going up by 5 every turn because of the bad, bad things we're doing, all of that hijacking. But it is making us $4,000 every week. So keep an eye on it, but we're going to be wanting to get out of there. Now, what's going on over in Rodham Hill? That's only going up by plus 3. So if I just put some money laundering in there, that'll be fine too. Though honestly, this place isn't exactly making huge money for me. Might be better just to sell that and move on when the heat gets too high rather than investing in that place. But yeah, Birch Hill seems to have been great. Right, keep time ticking along here. Keep an eye on the heat here. And we have successfully managed to chase those bastards out and indeed cost them a bit of their investment. Great. How are you doing? Oh, next turn. Next flipping turn. We've got ourselves a flipping level two. Don, love it. So, that means now every single one of my Kappa regimes can have three soldados. So that is now an extra two locations I can hold in each of these districts. Absolutely flipping marvellous. 
So in which case, yeah, you, my good man, how about you promote one of your associates to be a new soldado? And... Need at least one associate to promote. Hang on, where'd you get associates from? Ah, right now, he's actually got no one spare because everyone's been deployed. Okay, so associates is just literally muscle. It's just at this exact moment in time, you don't have any spare muscle. You do, though. So you... Promote one of yours. Who do you actually like? All right, Frank Lanza. You decided to actually promote him. So profit from financial rackets decreased by... Oh, um, that's, that's not good, actually. That's profit down and heat up. He's kind of terrible. Right, keep him away from financial rackets. However, increase muscle by... Oh, muscle just goes up by five for free if heat is below 50. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now, Spring Avenue down here is currently occupied. Ooh, basically no one. We could chase out the blues again. We could chase them out. Where are the rest of the blues? There's there's only one there. Right, it looks like the blues are presumably... Oh, hang on, are you... Is that part of this district? Hello? I assume that's just up here. And actually, I probably need to watch out for the purples. The purples are sooner or later going to start actually investing pretty heavily up there because they've got no flipping competition. Ah, and I see what's going on over here. So we've kind of screwed over the blues in my district, but the blues are spending pretty heavily in other parts of the world. Yeah, they've got plenty of men deployed over here, for example. So the blues have not exactly abandoned this area to me, but... They're certainly not spending as much as they would do otherwise. Right, in which case, we should probably just try and have a total monopoly on this district. So, Spring Avenue, immediately deploy Frank Lanza. His job is basically going to be to just drive these guys out as fast as he can. Deploy the men, go on to a war footing next turn. And here we go. We've actually got $55,000 right now. You know what we want to do here? Oh yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Let's get... A proper gentleman's club set up. And this should really pay for itself pretty quickly. Boom. This is a rich district. It's, yeah, a decent size right now. At this exact moment in time, heat is going down because, well, there's literally no crime here. And is a gentleman's club actually illegal? Is that actually a crime? It doesn't feel like it's a crime. Or is that just like a euphemism for, like, high-class escorts or something? I don't know. Maybe it's a crime. Well, actually, even if it's not a crime, it is being run by a crime family. But then, if a crime family is running a legitimate business, are they a crime family? Or is that just basically, you know, people owning businesses? Why do we even think these people are crime lords? Honestly, I've not done anything wrong, aside from the murder of the other crime lords. But, like, they were crime lords, but then, oh, but they think I'm crime lords. Oh, this might have all been a terrible misunderstanding. Oh, I just went from 5,000 to 26,000 over flipping night. Now I've got that money coming in. This gentleman's club, oh, that's doing the job. And I think we just, presumably, yep, we chased out the blues over here. Right, don't bother settling down. Instead, where actually are the blues at this point? Because if they're not going to be around here, we might want to chase them out entirely. Yeah, Frank Lanza, head over to Regal Heights. Just basically chase the blues out for good. Now, that theatre district is also generating a fair bit of heat, but it's worth so much money to me, I want to keep holding it. So that is definitely worth some money laundering. Let's just get some money laundering in there, even though it's expensive, just to keep the heat down. That should be fine over there. Birch Hills is currently holding steady at 33. That's good. Uh, and over here we've got... Ah, we've got rising problems here. The heat is definitely going up. Possibly, you're going to be wanting to pull out of there at some point and go and do something else. Yeah, actually, look over here. We've got a nice rich district right there. We could set up a second gentleman's club. That'd be fancy. We do get the bonus money from entertainment and gentleman's clubs have got to be that. Yeah, just one more turn like that. Maybe two more turns. Oh, heat is... Okay, one more turn. Okay, we're safe for now. Right, you, my good man, who are you again exactly? And yes, indeed. So, Sebastian Fleming, get out of there at this point. We've made good money. Head over to Dolman. Next turn, new gentleman's club. Oh, I forgot to actually sell the hijacking ring. Oops, that was a bit of a waste of money. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, because there was no one left to actually man it, it has instead just been lost. Well, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So, I think we're ready to actually, yeah drive out the blues simultaneously from both of the two districts they're in, which I'm hoping will just drive them out of this district for good. 
So, you, my good man, obviously we know what we want to do here. This is a nice, rich district. So, get a gentleman's club into production. Meanwhile, simultaneously, go on the war footing, and you over here also go on the war footing. We should kick them out simultaneously. At that point, they'll have no soldados on the ground at all, and I'm kind of hoping that that means East Cushman is going to be pretty much uncontested mine. So, yeah, you've been killed, and you've been killed. Marvellous. And money is just starting to flipping flood in. How much money are we making off this one, by the way? Actually, less. Quite a lot less, in fact. Interesting that the game isn't flagging a particular reason why. I tell you what, 5,000 is still fine. I'm still going to make sure this place is nice and safe by just putting a money laundering down because I can afford it and it just keeps my district safe. Like, ultimately, you probably just want a money laundering literally everywhere. And as you invest in certain rackets, yes, indeed, as time goes by, you actually get more experience running them. So as a result, you actually gain additional profits, etc., etc., so this is beautiful. As time goes by and as we invest more money and make more profit, we'll actually just make more and more money because you get better at running them. So me and gentlemen's clubs are getting on very nicely right now. And actually, as we get better at money laundering as well, and as we put more and more money into it, then we're also going to get better at dissipating heat faster, meaning I can run more illicit businesses spot on. So we've got some well set up sustainable businesses right now and everything's good. However, let's actually move. Hang on, who's actually chilling out over here? Frank Lanza. Time for you to head over to Lewis Gardens, I think, which is a nice, massive, rich, untouched area. Just basically start doing really short-termist things just to make as much money as you can out of the place. That's fine. Head over there, take all the flipping muscle you can actually take with you, and then we'll just start doing all sorts of nasty, nasty cheap but extremely high profit fraud and then we'll just move on before the heat gets too bad. So 31,000 to spend and the cheap nasty high heat things are generally very very cheap indeed. So extortion is honestly extortion is not great. Generates lots of heat but it doesn't even make that much money. That's not really that impressive. Now hijacking that certainly works yeah that pays for itself inside a couple of weeks that's definitely a better idea. And insurance fraud makes a lot of money up front, but then makes less and less over time. Ooh. But kidnapping's pretty good. Yeah, let's get some insurance fraud in there. That'll pay for itself in no time at all. Then we'll just move on before it becomes a problem. And next time, we can actually set up some kidnapping. Ooh, kidnapping. That's pretty good. Also, I should start looking at labor unions. Expensive to set up. Doesn't generate anywhere near as much money as a gentleman's club, but boosts recruitment immensely. A huge labour union could get me a lot of muscle very, very quickly indeed. I could see the advantage with that. But first, back to the kidnapping. There we go, set up the kidnapping. So Lewis Gardens is now currently going up by plus 13. I'm at 12,000 right now. And, oh, right. We've got ourselves an actual commission going on here. Interesting. So all of a sudden, the families have gathered together, and we're going to see who's actually, you know, doing well out of things. So in terms of money, I am making the most money, all right? In fact, I am making hugely the most money. Excellent. That is very, very good news indeed. I am doing very, very well there. In terms of recruits, yeah, actually, we're tied at 15 apiece at the top. Meanwhile, the rock... Ooh... The Rocker family, who I've had any dealings with, they must have been absolutely screwed because they're making basically no money and plenty of their people are dead. City occupation, yeah, it looks like I've got more of the city just because I've got more people my Don has leveled up faster. And rule break counts, zero. So right now, no one has broken any rules. Interesting. So as a result of that, loads of the other Dons from, I guess, other cities have decided they're standing with me... I've actually got more votes than anybody else. And it says five votes available, but I've only got four of them. Maybe I also get a vote, so it's like four of the votes and my vote. Well, this is probably good. I've not seen this before. Let's see what happens. So, new commission policy. We can increase influence from bribes by 100%. We haven't even got to that yet. Uh, recruitment goes up. Increase profits by 30%. Ceasefire. Ooh, forbid neighborhood conflicts. Interesting. Forbid the generation of heat. 
or a meta. Forbid singing to the authorities. Oh, what if you've got a nice singing voice, though? That's a bit of a shame. Let's just go for profit focus. I'm ahead of money, so if we increase everybody's profit by 30%, as an absolute number, I get way more money out of that. Profit focus, here we go. Ah, and I've learned a valuable lesson here. My actual attempt to just storm into Lewis Gardens, take it for all it's got, then get out, is not actually going to generate that much money at all. So in Lewis Gardens, uh, violent actions generate very little money, and theft generates very little money. So the hijacking's getting me a little, the kidnapping, barely anything at all. I guess the idea is supposed to be, because this is a rich area, they can actually afford to pay for, like, private security or whatever. So that's not really working for me. Right, in that case, guys, sell all your investments. Let's actually go down to, yeah, lots still flats. I feel like me and them have unfinished business. So a rich district, that didn't work so well. A poor, decent-sized district, however, that could work very, very nicely indeed. Yeah, sell all the investments. We'll make 24 grand back. And then after that point, it's Frank, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's Frank Lanza. Right, get down to the flats, Frank, and try doing all of that violent business down there. Meanwhile, yeah, over here in Drea, the yellows are starting to cause a bit of trouble. Quite a bit of trouble, in fact. They've sent someone over here into Last Row, who's generating 16 heat every single month. These guys have, yeah, they've just invested, uh, presumably they've just invested quite heavily in money laundering or something because the heat is now starting to go down. Or they've just suspended their rackets for a while. Because yeah, if heat's getting too bad, you can just suspend your racket for a bit and wait for it to cool down before you crack on. Now, I wouldn't have minded going into Laster Row because Laster Row has actually got itself, yeah, that is poor and reasonably large. So that might have been a nice place for me to set up a lovely labour union. That could have been very, very nice indeed. How about this place? That's small. Actually, does small even matter? I'm not sure size matters that much, aside from just, yeah, greater limits on how much you can and can't do. I mean, I guess we could come down here and... Okay, rather than trying to actually screw this place over, lot still flats, we could set up a labour union down here, see if that gets me loads of extra guys. So actually, I've already got plenty of extra guys down here. I'm okay for guys. I wouldn't mind having some extra guys coming over here, because right now I don't actually have my um, third soldado belonging to Arthur, purely because there's literally no one to bloody recruit. Though actually, if I just send some guys back to base, could I just send some guys... There we go, I've just sent some guys back to base. Great. You guys, promote an associate. Anyone will do. Marvellous. Uh, Gerald, good. Who are you exactly? You're an enforcer and also a teetotaler. Okay, alcohol rackets. Interesting. In fact, yeah, you, my new guy, get over to Last Row, kick those bastards out, see what you can do to just calm it down for a second, okay? Take five guys with you, and that should be absolutely fine. Once you're done, just kick them out, destroy them, you'll massively outnumber them, job done. And we've got, oh, uh, we have got plenty of money coming in here. Now, what did you guys want? Five votes for recruitment, five votes for profits, and then only... Four votes for Omerta, but that got picked ahead of recruitment anyway. Fine, profit, focus, and Omerta. Good, lots of money. I like lots of money. Right, you guys, go straight to war, please. Kick those bastards out, and uh, oh dear. They are causing trouble. Plus 20. I do not want them causing that much trouble in last row. We need to lock that place down. All right, nice needs to kick them out. That's absolutely fine. Let's actually get that labor union set up. Bit of a high upfront cost, but it still makes decent money. So get that underway, that's absolutely fine, and actually, get a money laundering in there too. We need this place to, to calm down pretty quickly. That spent a lot of money, but straight back up to 44,000, nice. What's going on here? Right now it's at zero. I'm actually going to suspend all rackets here, just for the time being, just let this place calm down. Let's get it back under 50 at the absolute bare flipping minimum. We got this place locked down for the time being. We've got new people coming in. And, uh, more importantly, I believe... Uh, hang on. Go back over to Benny here. Benny is level 3. Love it. And that means I can basically just pick one of these soldados, whoever I like the best, and promote them to a capo. Beautiful. You know what, Frank Lanza? I haven't actually done anything with you for a while. So, you, my good man, congratulations, you've been promoted, because Covert seems pretty decent to me. Five free muscle and heat slow. So, you get promoted. Great. So, you've now been promoted, but right now you've got, like, literally no muscle. 
So we probably need to actually, you know, give you some underlings and whatever. Also, we need a new Soldato for Benjamin. So he's just picked up Albert, who is a, ooh, brawler. Muscle plus three all the time. That's actually pretty decent. And Enforcer. All right. So he's pretty good at going into unfriendly neighborhoods. Very, very nice indeed. Now, the problem with Frank Lanza is, right now, he's actually got no Soldados whatsoever and no associates to actually promote. So what I probably ought to do is just send him into a district where he can just pick up some friends on the quiet, okay? He can just go to a nice quiet area and just chill out there. Everything will be absolutely fine. So how about we just send him over to... Yeah, just send him over to Rutherford City. He can just go there. Everything will be fine. Because the thing about Rutherford City is we've actually just set up this here labor union. So just let time pass for a second. Oh yeah, heat's going down fast there. Let's just let time pass. He's already up to two out of two. Great. Two out of two already. So you, my good man, just straight away, just because, yeah, I think there's a gambling den and we've got the labor union coming in as well. So you, start creating some soldados because now we've just gone up from six people on the ground to nine. So you've just promoted someone who is, oh, Butterfingers, that's no good. Right, don't commit theft with that guy. Erna, however... Okay, increases muscle by five with at least £25,000 in friendly investments. Okay, that's actually pretty decent. Okay, that's good. Put him where we've already got investments. And promote your only other friend as well because, you know, there's not much else you can do. Alcoholic, don't put this guy in charge of. Alcohol, enforcer, still decent to going into unfriendly territory. Not bad at all, really. Okay, good, good, good. Just, you know, keep him left there. How's this place going? Uh, just keep that going down. We've got plenty of money right now. In fact, yeah, right now we can probably invest down here in another actual labor thing. So another labor union down here in the poor district. Beautiful. Crack on with that. Let's see how that does. So that's in there. And that is immediately starting to make a decent amount of money. That is not bad at all. Good, 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 good. And this guy's already up to two out of two. So he's actually gaining people fast. And you know what? One more turn. Right. Okay, last a row. We may now resume all rackets, please. So that's going to make us a lot more money very, very quickly indeed. So now you just promote one more actual associate. And this time, like, please make him not suck. Covert and big spender. Eh, not great. It'll do. But what we do have is Frank Lanza has actually three soldados ready to go who all look suspiciously similar to... Is that just you? Is that just you like times three? Is that just kind of you from different angles? I'm suspicious it is. That means we're now ready to start investing or rather invading other parts of the city. Now, where's their trouble? Because I wouldn't mind going and finding some... Oh, blimey. The industrial basin. Someone has invested pretty heavily in here. Yeah, basically... Rather than spreading out, the Purples have decided, screw it, we're just going to actually invest $282,000 in one area, and then we're not going to guard it. Well, this strikes me as too good an opportunity to leave off. And they've got, yeah, only six people there, but Frank Lanza right now doesn't have the muscle to go in and actually take them over. But if we can just basically go and trash West Cushman... That'd be very, very useful indeed. And then we just head down over here. And yeah, we can actually start getting involved in the busy area down in the actual south. Now, if this goes right, now we've got the labor union up and running. This guy should start gaining. Okay, he's starting to make good money. And apparently I've made a million dollars total because I've got an achievement that says precisely that. Marvelous. Right, Frank, I need you to start deploying your troops. Mario and Arthur and Francesco. And just basically start doing whatever it takes to actually get some muscle inside your flipping branch of the family. Here we go. Gambling den. Boost recruitment. Marvellous. You may also have a gambling den, the boost recruitment. Let's just get some gambling dens down. We'll abandon them down the line. All we're really wanting to get out of this is, uh, yeah, the ability for you to generate men as fast as possible. And a labour union would actually boost recruitment immensely. Go on then. I'll build you another one over here. Get on with it, have fun. And it's going up, but it's going up slowly. All right, it's definitely slow progress training up a brand new branch of the family. But I tell you what we can finally afford over in the theater districts. Oh yeah, and entertainment is, oh yeah. Entertainment is extra profit. Well, how would you like 
the first casino of the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gambling and entertainment is making extra money here. This place is... That casino is generating $17,000. $17,000 a week. Oh, yeah. Oh, flipping, yeah. Well, as this place is apparently generating extra money from gambling, I guess we may as well actually have a nice gambling den as well. Or the lottery. Screw it, that makes good money. Oh, yeah, we're already up to another 100000 This is very, very nice indeed. And that means one more turn. Screw it. Throw down another casino. I think we're going to start snowballing here. This is going to make... Oh, we're already back up to another casino. Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're in good shape at this point. <laughs> Right, I see why um, an actual fair game where the AI doesn't actually have any advantages is technically listed in the game as being easy. The AI doesn't exactly seem that uh, capable of... Wait, what? Oh! Well, this is interesting. Okay, so it would appear that the reds have already come in and actually kicked the purples out. They got to it before I could do it. And now Longwood is at this point holding... How much... How did you even manage to spend that much money on one place? Blimey heck, okay, interesting. Oh, and better and better, Benny levels up again, and now I can have four Soldados by actual Capo, which means we can have a fourth guy over here in the east, which means Lewis Garden can now be invaded by the appropriately named Joe Amuso, who is a showman very good at putting on entertainment and, would you say, amusement. So that's just flipping spot on. So Joe Amuso, get in there, lovely, take some muscle with you, you go right ahead, and then, oh bloody hell, the money is starting to snowball like crazy. So last time we came into this place, we came in all guns blazing. Didn't work so well. This time, yeah, I think actually, oh, wait, what? Entertainment makes minimal money here. Well, honestly, that's... It's not that minimal, really. I mean, it's kind of fine. I'm happy to just kind of take that minimal money. It's still going to pay for itself pretty bloody quickly. Yeah, Lewis Gardens is just apparently a garbage area where violence, entertainment, theft, none of it works. What do you want from me, Lewis Gardens? I've tried honey. I've tried vinegar. Also, I think Frank Lanza will very momentarily have gained... Oh, yeah. He's got himself enough people to head in at this point. Right, Frank... You are going in, all right? I'm going to assign you right now over to, yeah, West Cushman. We're going in and we're just going to try and crush the other families. So head over there. Good job. Well done. Next turn, get in there. Okay, you got 20 people. The industrial basin here is occupied by, yeah, six and five and has already been heavily invested in. The real heavy investment is over in Longwood, where there are six and six. Right. Who's good at going into districts which we don't own? Muscle boosted by five when there's no friendly investment. Spot on. Right, Francesco, you're going into Longwood and I want you to smash the hell out of it. Take 17 muscle with you. That is absolutely flipping spot on. Take all the muscle you've got. Next turn. Okay, now, they own all the investments, but we have all of the actual muscle. So I'd say we're just going to immediately go onto a war footing with them. Next turn, they're gone. They're flipping gone. Absolutely trashed. At this point, we can basically just chase them around the district, just wiping out all of their investments. Absolutely flipping spot on. Also, I'm up to four capos and four soldados per capo at the moment. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think at this point, it's, uh, it's a bit late. It's too late for everyone else. We've now got enough manpower and enough men. I will say, yeah, on easy mode, it's a bit too easy to actually snowball. Because I'm just sitting on half a million dollars and nothing really to spend it on. So, yeah, at this point, I can just keep throwing down labor unions in poor areas, just get enough muscle that sooner or later, I can just out-attrition them. So yeah, just out of interest, I just started a new game setting it to a high difficulty where the AI has got a few more advantages. I think they just get given a few more men just to give them a fighting chance because, yeah, you can definitely see immediately I can't just walk all over everything anymore. There's a lot more people floating around in a lot more districts. There's, yeah, a lot more occupation going on by colours that aren't me. In fact, actually, I think they also start off with additional capos because... Uh, 
yeah, the average number of capos per district seems to be more like three, but I only still start off with two. So I think the game just basically on hard mode just gives them... Possibly their Don just starts off at level three. So as a result, he gets like um, three capos and three soldados per capo. But yes, you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I think you get the point. This here is the Commission Organised Crime Grand Strategy. I'm not sure I'd necessarily actually describe it as grand strategy, to be honest. I mean, sure, it's a strategic tactical thing. In fact, in many ways, it feels like a board game to me. I feel like it would actually make a very interesting, good board game, especially if you added some form of mechanic related to connections and actually had it on a board and connections tying the places together so you can't just move around within any given district. Or maybe if the districts are separated, that'll be fine. Yeah, it feels like a board game to me. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. I love board games. Me and Claire have got like a massive series of shelves with big Euro games on them, all right? We really, really flipping love board games. So I don't mean that as criticism in the slightest. Though I'm not quite sure I'd call it grand strategy. It's not going to be for everyone, it's not going to change the world, but for the right person, could be worth a purchase. Though I will definitely say, don't play on easy, even on like my first big proper game, it was very simple to accumulate huge wealth and just basically be ridiculously so far ahead, none of the AI stood a chance. Play on hard mode, probably pretty much from the beginning. That's, that's certainly the case. I'll also say it doesn't actually have a proper tutorial. I needed to spend a fair bit of time just kind of looking at the glossary and trying to figure out what was going on. So it could do with a proper tutorial as well. So not perfect, but for the right person, could well be worth a look. I will put a link down in the description below. And I never mind coming across what's effectively a board game. I do love board games. Hopefully, in fact, we'll have more of them in the future. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the Commission Organised Crime Grand Strategy. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, did people just vote out democracy? Hang on, what have you just done? Oh, go on, let's have the greatest Oktoberfest ever. Yay! Spain and Russia have announced a new alliance as a result of the warmongering of certain Central European countries. Oh, well, excuse me! My leader from now on, no weaklings will stand in the way of this country's path to glory. Oh, God, Germany, not again!